Hey guys, and welcome to part 2 of chapter 2 of our Python class, Python lectures. And today we're going to be talking about string concatenation. We're going to pick up right where we left off. And uh, string concatenation, as you already know from PLD 101, is just a term for saying whenever you want to add one string to the end of the another string. And in Python, you have to use the plus sign if you want to connect two strings together. In this case, we have a variable called message. And what we're doing is we are assigning it to a combination of two strings, hello and world. Because as you can see, hello is in its own quotation marks, as well as the word world is also has a pair of each own uh, quotation marks. And then we're just printing our variable message and we get hello world. So this is the way how you would concatenate your strings. Also, if you have a string that is too long uh, for your screen, for whenever you're writing your code, you can use string concatenation to make your code look uh, more neat, more clean. Uh, yeah, that is another way to use string concatenation. In this case, we're printing enter the amount of sales for each day and press enter. However, as you can see, we separated it into three different strings and then we just concatenated those strings together. If you do not use a plus sign, uh, but you still want to concatenate your strings, this is what's going to happen. So as you can see here, we are not using a plus sign. All we're doing is just putting those strings next to each other. And what's going to happen is they're going to be printed next to each other without any spaces. So that's another way to concatenate strings in Python, and that's called implicit string concatenation. And here is a great example of using that same sentence that we had with non-implicit string concatenation. Uh, however, we are not using the plus signs anymore. As you can see, they're not here. However, we are adding our own spaces inside of our strings. And as you can see, we're printing the same sentence as we did the other way. And this is just another way to do string concatenation. Now let's talk a little bit more about our print function. So your basic default print function will display a line of output with a newland character at the end of your data. And what newland character is, is simply it's just going to take your cursor to the next line. That's all it's going to do. However, it doesn't have to do it if you don't want it to do it. That's just by default. It gets a new line character at the end. However, if you use the keyword end and then you assign some value to it, in that case, your print function can have a different kind of character at the end instead of the new line character. So if you wanted to have any kind of character, for example, a semicolon or a period or a comma, if you want that to be the end of each of your print statement, you can use the special argument end and assign whatever character you want your print function to produce at the end of your line. Also, by default, your print function will use space as item separator. So if you are having a lot of arguments passed to your print function, a space is going to be your default uh, item separator. However, also, if you use SEP, which, which stands for separator, you can change that. So instead of having a space in between of your uh, string arguments, you can assign it to whatever character you want, the same as with the end. A couple of things to know whenever you're working with strings. If you put a backslash, there are some embedded commands that Python has. So slash n will produce a new line at the end, uh, wh wherever you put that backslash n, and slash t will produce a tab, which is just a couple of spaces. I think it's about four spaces, four or six spaces, uh, whenever you put backslash t. Now let's talk about printing a formatted output. Formatted output is available to you in Python and all you need to do is to specify that you want that output to be formatted and how you do it, you just put F in front of the string that you want to be formatted inside of your parentheses. In this case, nothing happens because we're not formatting this output, hello world, we're just printing hello world. However, Let's look at the next example. We have a variable called name that is assigned Johnny. And in this case, we want to print 
hello Johnny and instead of just typing hello Johnny as our string we can pass this variable into our formatted string and you do it by placing F opening your quotation marks putting whatever string you want to proceed in front of your variable then putting the curly braces right here curly braces and putting the variable inside of those curly braces this will produce hello Johnny however if name was assigned to any other word so it could have been not Johnny it could have been for example my name Sonia it would produce hello Sonia instead and what it what we call the anything that's inside of the curly braces we call those placeholders now moving on to a little bit more complicated stuff placeholders can also have expressions inside of them that are going to be evaluated as you can see here also our formatted string i can tell that by looking at the f in front of our string i know that it's a formatted string and then inside of our placeholder inside of our curly bra braces we have 10 plus 2 and as you can see here it's printing 12 instead of printing 10 plus 2 because it's inside of the curly braces so your computer will know that this expression needs to be evaluated and the same thing works with variables as you can see here val is now assigned 10 and we are adding 2 to the value that is stored in our variable val and in this case we have the same output the only difference is that here we put the actual number and here we are using a variable you can also use format specifiers when you're using um, formatted strings. In this case, there's a bunch of them, but I'm going to focus on the most important ones. So in this case, what we're doing is we are uh, trying to get our num value rounded up to two decimal places. All that you have to do is to put a colon, and then after the colon, you put dot, and to how many decimal places you want to round up. In this case, it's two, but it can be literally other num any other number, three or four, it doesn't matter. So whatever, uh, how many decimal places you want it to round up to, you specify with this number after the period. And then you have to put F at the end, and F stands for floating point number. So in this case, this output produces 123.46 however if we round it up to three numbers it would produce uh let's see one two three four five and then the seven would round up to um higher numbers so instead of having one two three six we would have one two three dot four five and then we are rounding up our six to seven so 123.457, that would be the output. Here's some more examples. In this case, we are specifying that we want our uh, string to be formatted to two decimal points and have a uh, comma as a separator between numbers. So as you can see, this one, 1 million, is going to be separated by commas right here. And then also, this is a very useful function right here that you have to remember because it's going to be on your quiz in Python in Pearson Revel. Uh, as you can see here, we have a discount variable that stores 0 0.5. However, when we're printing, we are putting uh, our colon, then our period, and then we want 0%. And what that means is that we want to have zero decimal uh, points after the period, and we want to present it as a percentage. So in this case, it's gonna just multiply this number by 100, and it's gonna show you that it's 50%. Some more examples, in this case, we want to uh, have our num separated by commas and d just specifies that it's an integer so d stands for integer don't ask me why it's just the way it is uh in python and yeah so we're just saying that we want this to be an integer and we want it to print it with uh separated by commas and in this case we want it to print in the e format with two decimal points you can also specify a minimum field width, so you can reserve a certain amount of spaces for your string. 
and in this case we are specifying that we want our field widths to be 12 so we want this number to have at least 12 spaces for uh, for displaying and we want it to be separated by a comma as you can see here a comma and then we want it to have two decimal points so in this case you see the space over here and that happens because we reserved 12 spaces for this number so in this case if you count all of these squares it, they will equal to 12 and uh, it's just going to be right justified your number is going to be put all the way to the right now with alignment you can also specify that then this sign is for left alignment and this arrow is for right alignment if you want it to be centered if you want the string to be centered you would use this special character for center alignment and this is these are the examples right here of how you can use it when formatting your strings in python here is the formula for uh, your format specifiers. So first you specify the alignment. After that, you specify how much characters you want to be uh, reserved for your string. Then you specify if you want your number to be separated by commas or not. Then how many decimal points you want your number to have. And then whatever type of uh, number you want to print. So pretty simple. Let's talk a little bit about the term magic numbers. And as we can see here, we have a random number 0 0.069 and nobody knows what that is. I'm looking at this code right now. I have no idea what that number stands for. As you can see, an interest rate, fee percentage, taxes, nobody knows what that number is. And that is what we call the magic number. And let me show you a couple of reasons why you should not be using magic numbers in your program. So first of all, obviously, it's hard to determine what is the purpose of the number because we don't know where it came from, what it's doing, what its purpose, no idea. So it's always better to assign that number to a variable and that variable will have a word to it. So we will know exactly what that number means. If you use that number in many different locations, it can be hard to change all of those at the same time. However, if you have a variable, that is assigned to that value, all that you have to do is just change that value of the variable and it's going to be changed automatically everywhere. And also you take a risk every time that you're writing that magic number in your program, you take a risk because of typos, literally because of typos. You can miss a point, you can miss a zero, you can miss a lot of things. So you just take a big risk by doing that so my advice to you is just assign that number to a variable and give it a good name that is understandable for anybody who who will look at your code now let's move on to something that you can use instead of the magic numbers and instead of the magic numbers python provides you with named constants and you are familiar with named constants already from pld 101 but let's cover it again real quick. A constant is something that will never be changed, that stays the same. And the difference between a variable and a constant is that a, the name of the constants is all caps. As you can see here, it's all caps, interest rate. And it uh, equals to 0 0.069. And when we use a constant, when we know when our, that our variable will not change, for example, interest rate, taxes, like local taxes, federal taxes, stuff like that. Here are some advantages of why you would want to use them. First of all, they make your code self-explanatory. What that means is anybody who will look at your code will know exactly what that number is. They will know exactly what that number is supposed to be doing in your program. Then again, your code is easier to ma maintain. If you just need to change the value of the constant, you can uh, just do that in one row and you just need to change one number and that constant is going to be changed everywhere when wherever you use it and obviously they prevent all of the errors that you could have with uh, magic numbers that's all i had for today this is the end of chapter two and what we covered today this is just a little overview of what we covered and as per usual let me know if there are any questions reach out to me by email or shoot me a text and we can talk about it and i can explain it to you more
and I will see you in chapter 3. Bye-bye.